Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to teach chords to the Chord Trigger MIDI Effects plugin in Logic Pro, or import chords into the Chord Trigger. So I got the idea for this video from a comment I received from Lawrence here, who asks if there is a way to import chords into Logic's One Finger Chord plugin. I'm assuming they mean the Chord Trigger, and yes, you can absolutely do this using the Chord Trigger in Logic Pro. It's not quite as simple as just dragging and dropping MIDI files into the Chord Trigger. It's a, it's a little more complicated than that, but it's actually, it's fairly simple and easy uh, to do. And this is likely a feature that not a lot of people are aware of, but you can actually take chords you've built in the piano roll or in the step sequencer, and you can learn them into the Chord Trigger without even using a MIDI controller and without having to click in each note in the chord trigger. This can also be really helpful if you have like a MIDI chord pack that you want to import into chord trigger and then save that as a preset and then recall it and, and use those chords inside of Logic without having to keep dragging and dropping MIDI files. So I'll show you how to do both of those things in this video. Before I get into the tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. Boombox allows you to store, share, and collaborate seamlessly, all in one place. And best of all, Boombox was made for music makers. Whether you're uploading tracks, stems, or full DAW sessions, Boombox has you covered. Plus, with features like timestamped commenting, shareable playlists, and royalty splits, you'll wonder how you ever lived without it. They now even have their own macOS sync app, so you can upload directly from your Mac to your Boombox folder. If you're ready to give Dropbox the boot, head over to boombox.io today to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so first let's build a chord bank in a particular key. So I'm just gonna create an eight bar MIDI region here, open this up in the piano roll editor, and let's go with C minor. So I'll start on C2 there. And I want to use some extended harmonies, like seventh chords and uh, what I'm calling add six chords, but they're not actually add six chords, I'll explain that uh, in just a bit. Now, if you already know how to build chord progressions from a scale and you wanna skip this part, you can totally do that. You're welcome to skip to the next section. I have chapters all posted below. So typically what I do is just start off with the scale. So C minor is C, um, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. So that's your C minor, your nat uh, C natural minor scale starting on C2. So I'm going to build triads, which, you know, triads are pretty easy. You just have to kind of know what key you're in. And so I'm just building all of the diatonic triads that are normally in the key of C minor. So we have C minor, D diminished, E flat major, F minor, G minor, A flat major, B flat major, and then C minor again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Okay, now let's add some extended harmonies. Let's make the C minor chord a C minor seven chord by adding the B flat to the top. The D chord, you can go two directions with this. You can go D, F, A flat, B. It's really C flat, but B. And this will give you a fully diminished seventh chord. It's got a lot of tension to it. Or you can take this up to C, and what you have is a half diminished seventh chord. Now, the half diminished with the C up top is actually the diatonic version of this chord. If you pull this down to C flat, that's actually an altered chord, although you'll see in a, in a lot of classical music, this is the normal uh, diminished seventh chord that's used. I'm gonna go with the half diminished seventh. For E flat, I'm going to add a diatonic sixth to the top, so it's gonna be the same note uh, as uh, the seventh in this chord. Now, this is not really an add six chord. What this really is, is it's just a one chord. It's a C minor seven chord. I'm just taking the bottom note and moving it up an octave, um, but I'm really still treating this like a E flat chord, not uh, an F chord. It's just an, technically an F minor chord, but in first inversion. Uh, then we have F minor seven, so F, A flat, C, E flat, G minor seven, so G, B flat, D, F, a flat, I'm gonna do the same thing I did over here and add like a diatonic sixth to the top of that. And I'll do the same for the B flat chord, add a diatonic sixth. And again, if I drag over both of these top notes, 
bring them down an octave, you'll see that the A flat chord is just an F minor seven chord and first inversion. And you'll see that my seven chord here, the B flat, is actually just a G minor seven chord in first inversion. But again, I'm treating these like A flat and B flat chords. And then for my uh, top C minor chord here, I'll just make that a C minor seven. Now, what I like to do at this point is add bass notes. Um, if you want your chords to have bass notes in them, um, they don't necessarily have to. So I'm just going to double the scale down here, down an octave. And then what I like to do is smooth out the voice leading here. Um, so I'm probably gonna take four, five, and six, and let's take that top note and drop it down an octave. For the seven chord, let's drop the top two notes down an octave. And for the final one chord, let's pull the top three notes down an octave. So here is my chord bank in C minor with some extended harmonies and smooth voice leading. So let's learn these into the chord trigger plugin. So on the MIDI effects here on any software instrument track, you can pull up the chord trigger. Now, one way to approach this, if you don't want to build your chords in piano roll, is you can just click the multi button, click um, learn, actually not learn, we need to clear some of these. Let's clear this note, let's clear this note. Um, and so now we have just have a blank slate to start from. I'm going to go from C2 to C3. And what you do is you click learn, you click the root note that you want to play, and then you can click in the chords if you want. And for some people, this may be easier than typing them in the Piano Roll Editor. I kind of like working in the Piano Roll Editor uh, more, if I'm being honest. You can also just play these in, and it'll learn them. I think it will. Yeah, there we go. And so now when I uncheck Learn, there it is. So. You can totally do that, and you don't even have to do this stuff in the piano roll, but watch this. I'm going to click Learn. I'm going to click C2, and I'm just going to play this first chord. It learns it. Then I click D. I'm going to tab over. I'm using the greater than, less than brackets. They're technically the comma and period key, but you can jump around one bar at a time. So let's go to bar two, and while Learn mode is still on, hit Play. It learns that chord. Let's tab over. Select E flat as my root note, tab over, F, tab over, G, tab over, A flat, tab over, B flat, tab over one more time on the octave C, and then uncheck learn. And we have taught the chord trigger plugin all of those chords. And I'm just playing one note at a time. I'm just playing the C minor scale. I'm just playing these trigger keys on my MIDI controller and I'm triggering all of those chords. Now, what you can do at this point is you can save this as your own custom chord bank preset. So you come up here and you go to save as, and I'll call this extended harmonies C minor. I already have one, so I'll call this O2. And then I can recall that preset at any time. So even if I don't have these notes here, these chords here, even if I have a completely different instrument, maybe I'll grab one of my Divine Waves instruments like wither here, like a synth pad type instrument, I can load up the chord trigger, pull up that preset, and I instantly have chord presets I can pull from. Now with some instruments, these chords down in the, the two octave with some bass notes in the one octave may be a little too low. So what you can do is you can add the transposer after the chord trigger, and you can pull this up by one octave, which is 12 semitones, or two octaves, uh, which is 24 semitones.
So this makes building chord progressions with just single key presses super easy. Now, another way to approach this is if you have purchased like a MIDI chord pack. Um, I actually have my own MIDI chord pack. It's completely 100% free. You just go to my website, carneymediagroup.com, go to sample packs, and it's right here. This is the MIDI chord builder pack. And when I say this is free, I mean it's 100% free. You don't have to sign up for anything. You don't have to enter any information. There's no trackers. You won't get a bunch of spam emails or anything like that because I don't collect your email. Uh, so it's just a completely free download that's meant to be helpful for your education. You know, it's, it helps people out who don't know much music theory and have trouble building chord progressions. So you just click download. It's going to take you over to WeTransfer. And then in WeTransfer, you just download it and it'll show up as a folder up here in your downloads. Okay, so that's that. So let's say you're working with a MIDI chord pack and you want to import those chords into the chord trigger. Well, all you need to do is come up with a set of chords, either by using the diatonic chord positions that I have here. So I, I have all root position seventh chords in A minor, right? I can pull that in. We'll uh, go ahead and import the tempo. And that's all of the diatonic seventh chords in the key of A minor. And then you can just use that same method I demonstrated before, add the chord trigger. Let's go over to multi. Let's clear these two notes and we'll set a range. This is in the key of A minor and it starts on A2. So let's start the chords on A2 and end on A3, just like so. And then you just follow the same uh, pattern I did before. You learn a note. Play a chord, tab over, play the next chord, tab over. And we're just teaching the chord trigger each of these chords one by one. Let's go over to F, tab over, G, and then finally A. Uncheck Learn. So now I can play all of these seventh chords with just one key, and I could save these as my own custom preset. So I'll say diatonic sevenths A minor. Boom. And now I can recall that preset anytime I like. But that's one way you can use a chord pack and just get all of those chords into Logic in the chord trigger and not have to go back to, you know, dragging and dropping each chord in one by one as you're building out a chord progression. So there you go. That's how you can use the chord trigger to import chords from Piano Roll or the Step Sequencer in Logic Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.